All right, praise the Lord, everybody. Pastor Steve Sterling from the Dallas Revival Center here in the heartbeat of heaven, Dallas, Texas. Uh, welcome once again to another one of our programs. Uh, you know, I was, had some extra data that I had left over uh, before I made the 2022 video, and uh, it happens to be on Tuesday. It's the 28th of December. It's about 1127, almost 1130 here in Dallas, Texas, sunny skies and uh, pretty nice weather. And uh, we had tremendous services over the weekend. It was fabulous, really fantastic, beautiful, forceful, powerful, you know, people healed, delivered, uh, people saved as well. So thank God for all those good things and wonderful things that God brings uh, at wrapping up the year. Praise God. That bookend Sunday and Monday services were really fantastic. <clears throat> you know, you just can't brag about God enough. And so... But anyway, um, as I was going to produce, I just began to send out the word that the Lord has uh, given me for today. Uh, I was running across some scriptures, and I thought these were a nice kind of shoelaces to tie up before we get into the actual word that we want to speak today. In 1 Timothy 1.14, it says, um, And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ was exceedingly and abundant with faith, love, which is in Christ Jesus. So all those things mixing and working together are so beautiful, aren't they? You know, faith worketh by love. And so when you have the love of Jesus Christ uh, and faith is populating and uh, leading out into, you know, miracle signs and wonders, and then you've got uh, the exceeding and abundant grace, say, the grace of our Lord was exceedingly and abundant with with, along with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. So uh, everything synced and sunk in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one, the Meshach. So anyway, that's just a beautiful, uh, you know, scripture to lead out into the message with. And of course, at Romans 5.20, as we were deliberating and just uh, musing about the scriptures this morning, in Romans 5.20, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounds, grace did much more abound. So sin abounds, but grace does much more abound. That's uh, Romans 5.20. For those of you that can use that plug in today, there it is for you. And then Romans 6.14 says, for sin shall not be your master. I love that. Oh, I, I thought that was gracious, uh, glorious. Sin shall not be your master because you're not under the law, but under grace. So I'm just looking at this as in a vision and seeing myself in a bunk bed. And I'm laying down on the bottom bunk and grace is on the top bunk. Sin shall not be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. So we have God's grace mastership working in our life. God's graceful mastership working in our lives. And this isn't even the message. I mean, I mean, uh, the people say that, you know, if you talk about grace too much, you're going to water down the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is about grace, isn't it? I mean, there's scripture after scripture after scripture in the New Testament about grace. Um, you know, Romans 5.15, but the gift is not like the trespass, for uh, if the many died by the trespass of one man, talking about the first Adam, how much more, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abound to many? The gift that came by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ. How much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ? So there it is. God's grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, completely, um, you know, outdoing trespass and sin, iniquity. And there it is. So God is so faithful. And it's so wonderful. And, and all of this really causes us uh, to reign in life. You know, I, I deliberate and I meditate and I concentrate on grace 
every single day, you know, and if you're not saying grace over your meal, being thankful over your meal, meals that you eat, uh, knowing that God said he would bless your uh, bread and water, uh, then you're not doing yourself a service because uh, this food is like medicine when God blesses it and you consume it. And that's where grace starts, starting to be thankful and grateful for everything that God is bringing and singing in this season. Um, and I love this. Uh, in Romans 5, 17 again, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace, look at that, abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in and through uh, one man, Jesus Christ. So what are we saying here? We're saying that we'll reign with him in this earth through the abundance of the grace that he's bringing and the free gift of righteousness. Now, see, uh, everything is free in kingdom. Once you operate those dials and flip those uh, switches, and you begin to understand the complexity and the wonderful dexterity and the wonderful uh, <coughs> operations of kingdom things, you'll know that uh, all things are ours and all things are possible. And, you know, everything is free in kingdom things. You know, you don't have to toil or labor and sweat. And, you know, there, there remaineth a rest yet for the children of God. But you've got to get in the labor to enter into that rest. In other words, you've got to... Uh, work on getting rid of unbelief and doubt, fear and anxiety, and replace it with trust, absolute trust of God's intervention and mitigating on our behalf. And of course, I've set out videos about Hebrews uh, chapter 4, verse 16, about the throne of grace and the one that sits on the throne of grace and about how the veil's been rent. Jesus Christ's body was rent so that we might enter in so you might do away with the works of the flesh that we might enter into uh, the holies of holies and then receive uh, mercy obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of our need in other words finding uh, the right situation finding the answer finding the solution finding the uh, missing pieces of the puzzle that type of thing everything rolls into uh, God's assumptiveness, God's uh, victory and his uh, authority and, and, and awesome power. You know, God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. There it is. You become an ace. Aces in grace. Races in grace. Amen. And, and so uh, also... Uh, care is in grace. There's so much there. It's it's all there. And we reign with him because of the free gift of righteousness. God putting us in everything uh, upright and standing upright and not being um, in any way um, upside down. In other words, God becomes our morality through Christ Jesus. Uh, uh, the offering of, of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and his blood that was spilled, put everything in moral, moral uh, perfection, so that we, when we present ourselves to God in Christ, there's no um, destructive element through the law, because Jesus lived up to the law, and He accomplished for us. Uh, all dotted all the I's and, and uh, crossed all the T's and uh, became legally everything we need to have right standing before God and to pull us out of the um, place of um, indemnity, liability, loss, limitation, and hesitation. In other words, taking us legally out of the devil's dominion. And, and away from all his opinions and allow us to have free access to God 24-7, 365, and to have whatever we need uh, provided for us there at the throne of uh, mercy and grace. 
And again, mercy, uh, keeping away from us everything that we deserve to suffer. And then grace, giving us everything that we don't deserve. I mean, it's a win-win situation, no matter how you look at it, at the throne of grace. In Hebrews 4.16, um, and, you know, because we don't serve God after the letter anymore, Second Corinthians 3, 6, who also hath made us able ministers, Paul said, of the New Testament or the New Covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, and the Spirit giveth life. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. So we have a life covenant, a refreshed covenant, a uh, reigning in life covenant uh, with God, which is just... Uh, resplendent glorious just absolutely fantastic and just uh, you got to keep yourself uh covered in the armor of god and uh and let the word of god uh do what it does uh very much so uh in every possible area of your life that is bring about uh change in major ways, you know, and that's my whole theme of 2022 is that God's glory, the Father's glory is going to come in and rearrange and change everything in our lives like we've never known before. And our, our, our born again spirit is one thing, but now a born again lifestyle is quite another. And this is what God's doing for us as we're being transferred over into the kingdom of light. I mean, all of us every piece and part of us. Amen. Our old man is being transformed according to uh, the scripture in, um, yes, in Romans 12, 2. And I just read it from the Amplified Bible. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with the superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what is the will of God and what is the good and acceptable and perfect plan and purpose for your life. So we're moving into the good and acceptable and perfectness of God's plan and purpose for our lives. And of course, as we are renewed, Ephesians 4.23, be renewed in the spirit of your minds. See, we're having a mind uh, renewal. Our, our hearts have been born again, and now our mind is being renewed. And Ephesians 4.24, put on the new self, and now we're talking about a brand new self. And this is what I'm talking about. Uh, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. This is what I'm talking about. Putting on the new self. See, and this happens by um, letting the word of God reflect the glory of the Father in your life. You know, in Psalm um, 19, 7 to 11, it says the law of the Spirit is perfect. Perfect. Converting the soul, that's your mind, your emotions, your will, your intellect, your imagination, uh, letting uh, the Lord uh, perfect you, converting your soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making the wise simple. So we're talking about the real sure thing of perfection, working seamlessly in our lives as everything is becoming renewed. Amen. Uh, and we talked about that for the new year, that everything is brand new. Everything is brand new. Uh, Psalm 51.10, Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. And it even tells us in Romans 13.14, it says, Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust, etc. But, you know, putting on the Lord Jesus Christ and making no provision for the flesh. In other words, uh, we're supposed to reckon ourselves uh, dead to the world. And, and uh, Jesus has eradicated sin. And, uh, and Galatians 2.20 talks about uh, it's no longer I that live, see, but Christ that liveth in me. You're, you're feeding your spirit, not 
catering to the flesh. You're feeding your spirit, man. You are at the throne of grace. You are open to God's way and God's provision. You are seated with him at the right hand of power and grace. There with the high priest seated with him and in him and working through him at the highest possible level. The most holy place in the universe is the throne of grace. You know, and you just can't get away from the grace in the gospel. I mean, it's all over the place. But, you know, we're supposed to um, present ourselves a living sacrifice to God according to the scripture in Revelation, or excuse me, in Romans 12 and, and uh, in verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, on account of God's mercy, to offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, there it is, the renewing of our minds. And uh, we are uh, presenting ourselves to God for spiritual worship. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth because God is a spirit. Therefore, we are spirits. and We must uh, flow and go with him, link with him, and connect with him and operate with him at that level. A man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The spirit and life proceeds out of the mouth of God. John six sixty three. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. Thank you, Lord. You know, Mark four nineteen, But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for other things come in and choke the word of God and become unfruitful. You know, we could be totally fruitful, totally blessed, as we um, allow ourselves to be aligned with God who is um, self-contained and uh, operates in infinity uh, wealth infinity prosperity and infinity substance he's never sick he's never discouraged he's never um, in a place in a mode of uh, being contested and not being able to overcome see and so um, we just flow with God and go with God at these different levels and just watch God operate in, in amazing and glorious ways. See, I haven't even got to my message yet. See, it, there's just so much there that is just uh, absolutely amazing. God's word is so rich. And, of course, I've talked about uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 in a previous video. Um it says, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May the God of peace sanctify you, God himself, through and through, in the New National Version. May you, uh, may your a whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he wants to uh, integrate himself in the processes of ourself, into the makeup of ourself, into the character of ourself, into our beingness and our aliveness and bring his peace and uh, set us apart. And that goes right along with another scripture right now I'm thinking of. See, he really, he's doing all this for a reason. Um, you know, we're called uh, before the foundation of the world. Our lives have been set up to be absolutely God assumptive in this world. Ephesians 1 4 said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Now, what, look what it says here in verse 4 it says, For he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his presence in love. You know, he wants us blameless. He doesn't want any spot on us because he, that indicates, you know, sickness or that indicates uh, poverty or, you know, our, our, our challenges in our moral makeup, uh, 
challenges in, in um, our outflow in life, you know, less than perfect. So he um, wants us to flow in his love. We've been chosen to flow in his love. He predestinated us for the adoption as his sons through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will. See, his will is, is a pleasant thing. It, 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 it's a pleasurable thing to a person that's born again, a person that has a spirit that is connected to God. Because we uh, we move in the, uh, sonship. Sonship means that we have all of the royal and regal rights, all the covenant rights, blood rights uh, of the sovereign God that rules the universe. And we were predestined to this, to be adopted. And we're blessed with every spiritual blessing, every spiritual blessing. So spirit always dominates the natural world, always dominates the material world, always dominates the earth in which we live. See, and this is the kind of velocity, kind of power, kind of potency, kind of ability, kind of uh, uh, force and uh, issuance of uh, God's marvelous uh, miracle-making experiences in our life. Well, I'm going to have to make another video. I haven't even gotten to where I wanted to go, but these are preliminaries evidently are important. Uh, so I had to just go and flow with God on this level of experience. Um, you know, in the Amplified Bible, it says just as in his love, he chose us in Christ, actually selected us for himself as his own before the foundation of the world, so that we would be holy, that is, consecrated and set apart for him and his purpose-driven life for us and, and cause us to be blameless in his sight and love. Say, when there's no accusation, no condemnation, no inferiority, no guilt, then you're built to last. You're built for the majestic, the marvelous, the mighty, the matchless, the amazing, the phenomenal, outside the box, uh, just in a whole different paradigm. You know, everything's been everything's been prepared in advance. Everything has been prepared in advance. Ephesians two ten. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance as our way of life. Our way of life has already been prepared in advance. And if that doesn't just blow your mind, if that doesn't just take you to another level. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, that's called the appointment to eternal life in Acts 13, 48. When the Gentiles heard this, they rejoiced and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were appointed for eternal life, see, believed, see, appointment or appointment with eternal life, appointment with eternal consequence. Our appointment with eternal revelation, our appointment with eternal restoration, our appointment with eternal refreshing, our appointment for the eternity of things to sing in our life in most boundless ways, endless ways, inexhaustible ways. Thank you, Jesus. It's just glorious. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this, and so I'm going to get back with you. And so we'll get together once again as soon as we can. Uh, I'll try to get that other video out to you that I wanted to get out this morning, but this took precedent first, so we let God have his way and let him, let him lead, our, lead us out into everything we do. God bless and God's best, 28th, and the countdown to the new year of 2022. In Jesus' name, bye-bye for now.
My God. Doesn't that do something for you? Psalm 101, uh, 16, verse 9 to 11. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope.
uh, you know, the father spoke to him and said, all that I have is yours. All that I have is yours. So what, what's happening here? We talk about the word of reconciliation. We talk about, you know, God forgiving our uh, sins and equities, transgressions, trespass, wiping all our slates clean. Starting in the new year, Ezekiel 36, 26, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. New heart. There it is. New, 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 brand new. I give you a new heart, put a new spirit within you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh, more dexterity, more yieldedness, and more comprehension of who God is and what he wants to do. Uh, Psalm 51, 10.